Welcome to Heart of the Shepherd, and thank you for continuing to follow our study now in the book of Romans. Our scripture reading today is Romans chapter 8. Now, I've titled this devotional, Freedom. The battle is not over, but the victory is won. And so I do want to invite you to open your Bible, turn with me to uh, Romans chapter 8, as we consider the spiritual battle that uh, Paul was writing about. Well, like the prior chapters in our study of Paul's epistle to the Romans, today's scripture reading, Romans 8, challenges us with theological terms that define the fundamental doctrines, that is, the teachings of our faith in Christ Jesus. Now, once again, a chapter break obstructs the flow and substance Paul discussed in Romans 7, where he was describing the believer's spiritual warfare between the flesh and the spirit. Paul had written, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And again, Romans 7 verse 24, the picture there is Paul's struggle with the flesh, the sinful flesh versus the spirit of God that was indwelling him as a believer. Well, Romans 8 in verses 1 through 4, we have what I would describe as no condemnation. Now, while Paul's spiritual warfare was not over, he knew victory over sin was promised. And so he declared, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Two ways of living. You live to the flesh and feed the, the sinful lust thereof, or walk in the Spirit. Paul then continued, and I quote, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Romans 8 and verse 2. So we ask the question, what did Paul mean when he wrote that those who are, quote, in Christ Jesus are free from the law of sin and death? Verse 2. Well, those who then, by faith, believe that Christ died for the penalty of their sins and rose from the dead, are free. Free from the law's condemnation, as you read in verse 1. And so we understand the law and the commandments are not the means of salvation, verse 3. However, they instruct us in God's perfect standard for moral uprightness and holiness which is described in Galatians 3 and verse 24. Now, although we are free from the law's condemnation, we are not free to do as we please and ignore the law's requirements, that is, the standard that God has given us. In verse 4, we must walk then not after the flesh, the lust of the flesh, but after the Spirit. Well, the Spirit of God obviously does not lead a believer to walk contrary to the Word of God. If we walk, and I quote, after the Spirit, we will manifest in our lives the fruit of the Spirit. According to Galatians 5, verse 22 and 23, that is love and joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, that is, that self-control, against such there is no law. And then consider no obligation, verses 5 through 17. And so the carnal heart we have versus the spirit-filled heart in Romans 8, verses 5 through 8. Now, a man's desires are indicative of his spiritual character. And so while a carnal heart craves sinful lust and the desires of the flesh, the lust of the flesh dominate then a carnally minded sinner. His heart, his mind, his affections, we read in verse 7, are enmity against God. That is, the sinner's heart, his mind, and affections are not only opposed to God, but they are actually hostile to him. Well, according to verse 8, such a heart cannot please God. Now, by contrast, 
A believer who yields to the Spirit desires the things of the Spirit. Romans 8 verse 5. And so the Spirit of God then rules in his heart. He, verse 6, enjoys life and peace. After salvation, the Spirit of God indwells the believer and his mind and desires, according to verses 9 through 11, are transformed. He no longer desires to live after the flesh, verse 12 and 13. Now think about it. What an extraordinary revelation when we read, and I quote, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God, Romans 8, verse 14. Now, a believer's life, you see, who has the indwelling of the Spirit, that believer's life is no longer ruled by the sensual desires of the flesh, but is, verse 14, led by the Spirit of God. And so, as a, as a believer, we have to examine ourselves. Are we feeding our flesh with the desires of the flesh, or are we, by God's Word, feeding our spirit, which is the Spirit of God? Now, because we are then the sons of God, we read in verse 15, we are slaves to fear, that is, no longer slaves to fear, that is the fear of God's judgment. Indeed, believers are adopted and have access to God, and we read in verse 15, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Now, a closing thought for you today. So much more might be written. However, I need to conclude today's study with this thought. A question, how can we know that we are the children of God. Well, as we read verse 16, God's Spirit beareth witness with our spirit. Now, as the children of God, then, we understand that we have access or we have standing with God the Father, not by works of righteousness, which we have done. We, though, by faith, have all the rights and privileges of sonship. That is, we are adopted into God's family. And so when we cry, Abba, Father, he hears us. Of course, as sons and daughters, our desire should be to please and honor him in deed and in truth, 1 John chapter 3 and verse 18. And so I close with two questions. The first is, what do you desire? What do your thoughts and passions reveal about the spiritual condition of your heart and nature. Well, I trust our study is opening up your heart, your mind, your thoughts, and you're get, having a greater understanding than you did before we began this study. Thank you for being a part of Heart of a Shepherd, and God bless. Bye-bye.